this evening we're going to talk about no strings attached. In essence, we're going to talk about bonds a little bit more than we have over the last several years. <clears throat> the word says that we're not to be a part of this age. Be in the world, but not of it. And we've talked about the deliverance that God is doing in delivering the sons out of the domain of darkness, which in our last couple of podcasts, we've basically said that it's one thing to deliver the sons out of the domain of darkness, but it is another to get the tentacles of this age out of the sons themselves. It is far deeper than what we've understood. And it takes a great deal of insight and revelation from the Holy Spirit to even see where the needs lie. Over the years, we've talked about different aspects of what creates a bond and how do you break bonds. And these were all on a very cursory level of what we can sense with our eyes, what we can draw a logical conclusion to. And so in our drive to walk free and unfettered, We've really worked on relationships, connections, uh, obligations, sympathy, all of the obvious that would create some sort of cord or bond or expectation with someone else. We've also spoken about the bonds of how we, uh, how we think, being bonded to our concepts being bonded to a way of perception. And we've spoken that it has been one of the main uh, focuses of the Lord to get us out of seeing things the way that we've seen them. It's been a process of unlearning and relearning, a process of letting go all of this is in the scope of what we would call bonds. Uh, it's not the obvious being bonded to another, as we have taught in the books, and then being subject to the oppression that might be on another or the blindness that might be on another. That is, that's pretty obvious uh, at this stage to those who have eyesight to understand that you know, relationships that are not of the Spirit of God uh, can be a great detriment. And uh, the carnal Christian really would have no idea. But to the ones that are called to this path, you become more and more aware, even if you aren't able to put your finger on, on it, uh, of those things that would violate your atmosphere. In the book of Isaiah... It talks about wake up, wake up. It's, I think, Isaiah 62. And through the process of waking up, you're able to step outside of that which has been a fetter to you that has bonded you to the unclean thing. I think Isaiah speaks basically, you know, you wake up, you shake the dust, and you come alive, and the unclean thing will no longer have access into you. And I, I think we need to ponder on that scripture a little bit, because it's really predicated on being able to come alive, to wake up, and to begin to see. Uh, and in so doing, the promises, the unclean thing will no longer come into you, the unclean spirit 
the unclean bonds and contacts, the oppressions that have held you back. But it's not just a slam dunk that all of a sudden you come alive and with that comes a subsequent immediate release. No, the first step is to wake up, really wake up. And I know that we're all in this process of waking up even more fully and coming alive even more fully. And that creates an atmosphere for the Lord to move, to begin to reveal the unclean thing that it has had access to you. It's like in, in, in Psalms 2. It says, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Or Psalms 140, verse 5, The proud have hidden a snare for me. They have spread the cords of a net by the path. They have set traps for me. Or Psalms 129, The Lord is righteous. He hath cut asunder the cords of the wicked. Or Psalms 18, The cords of death encompass me. The torrents of destruction assailed me. All of these are speaking of bonds, uh, but they're not limited to just uh, transference that could come against the sons of God by virtue of their connections, their relationships, or contacts. But it, it's 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 far it's far deeper, and that is the path that we're on, and that is plummeting the depths of God. Where that which, you know, the promise is that which has been hidden will be made known. And there is so much that has been hidden. And not so much, we're not even talking about the evil in the earth and what is being, what is happening behind closed doors. You know, on a global scale or on a uh, a satanic level. But we are taking this very personal. And we're talking about that which has been hidden to us, that has had input into each of the sons, and that has been a source of hindrance and a block to them. And, you know, as strange as this may sound, and if this is a problem, just put it on the shelf. But we're not even talking just about this lifetime. We're talking about many different lifetimes. The cords of death, the bands that might be hindering you may not be entirely derived from this present sojourn, but could be a product of that which you acquired the time before this or the time before that. And and I know you're you're thinking, so we're talking about reincarnation, but yet our pursuit is resurrection life. But we're not really going down this path of talking about reincarnation just to say that there are energies from many different sources uh, that we need to be aware of and allow the Lord to show us. It was like when he was talking to the disciples about John the Baptist. We all remember that. And he says, well, John the Baptist was Elijah the prophet, if you can accept it. Even the Lord knew that was going to be a big step for the disciples. So he had to say, if you can accept it, John the Baptist was Elijah. So... um you know, this is nothing new. And so there are times when things just don't add up. It's because they're outside of our present frame of reference. And that's why we're pursuing even more deeply the deeper meetings with the Lord that will peel the veil back within us. And the Lord 
will then show us we're not going to go on a witch hunt and just start digging around and coming up with concepts, ideas, or whatever the carnal mind might want to say. Not at all. We're, that, 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 that is just soul. But what we are saying is opening up an atmosphere for the Lord to reveal that which is hindered, that which is blocked, and that which has restrained. And reveal it to us so that it might be removed. Whether it's this lifetime or another lifetime. And I believe that's something that we have to continue to look to the Lord about. The realm of bonds and contacts, the realm of our personal paradigm and how we have thought is all being rewired. In fact, we mentioned that in the last word, that God is rewiring us. And I think that can't be said enough. God is rewiring the sons. And that involves the breaking of bonds and, and the breaking of the cords of death that have en encircled the sons of God. And it goes very deep. It goes very deep. There's so many aspects to this just give me a moment here i'm i'm just collecting a couple of thoughts One of the first words the Lord began to speak as we left the churches was the need to let go. We had no idea, and I think we still are understanding it more deeply, to what degree that really, um, he, he was really meaning when he said let go. Because we have learned Unbelief. Unbelief is something that you learn. Uh, it is something that you acquire by association, by ex exposure to the age. Uh, young children, when they're first born, they're not born with uh, this level of limitation that we know. It is acquired by association from the parents and peers and whatnot. So a lot of what we're doing even if we don't quite understand it, and we're not really sitting here meditating on it, but we're in a process of unlearning. Uh, sometimes it doesn't, you, you don't think of it that way. You don't really look at your day-by-day -day experience and realize, oh, I'm, I'm unlearning. You know, how do you, how do you look at it from a day-to-day -day basis? It's hard. Sometimes you can go back and you can look at a year or six months or a certain time frame and you can see, oh, I see where I let go of that. I let go of that way of thinking. I, I, you know, I, God met me and I began to expand the tent pegs of my dwelling. My reality began to change. Well, that only happened because you first were able to let go, unlearn, what you had acquired in your present sojourn, so that God could then begin to literally expand the tent pegs of your dwelling, expand the level of reality uh, and your ability to see on a much clearer and deeper level. What we're doing right now is, in our pursuit after the Lord, is creating an atmosphere within our heart for him to continue to reveal that which is hidden. So that that which is hidden might be removed. You know, you could say, you know, you talk about the Antichrist. And, 
you know, we've even made reference in the past to getting rid of the Antichrist within us. And and that goes back to the scripture about the war against the soul and the spirit. The Antichrist being the soul that is, how does the scripture go, so diametrically opposed to the spirit of God. We haven't, I don't know to what degree that revelation has really sunk in and how um, at odds the soul is with the spirit. But that's what's being let go of. The soul and all of its perceptions and all of its quirkiness. We're just, we're letting go of the soul. We're creating an atmosphere for the Lord to reveal to our spirit. And as he reveals, we're able to then see. And that's really the only way that we're ever going to see. It's not going to be through deductive reasoning, through what seems obvious. Oh yeah, I need to break that bond. I need to break that bond. Well, yes, you do. If we're talking about relationships and all of that. But... What we're talking about here is on a whole different level than there. At this point, I'm assuming you're not on the level one or two where you're dealing with the rudimentary bonds that have to be broken. But you're on a much higher plane where you're going to begin to deal with the hidden things. And God is going to reveal the hidden things. And in revealing, he brings release. He brings deliverance but they're hidden until it's revealed to you and if it's from a different lifetime it's really hidden and all that we can do as we move forward is to continue to seek the face of God and give him the atmosphere to everything within us we've talked about our ability to give ourselves to the Lord and our ability to give ourselves to God is based on the fact that we're able to do that and we're only able to do that to the degree that we have died on the cross and the soul has died out. That's the only way we're able to give God greater access into every room in our house, every part of us. So, our level of givenness has been a progressive uh, path. You know, you give yourself to whatever degree you can where you are. But you know that as you're changing, as you're dying out, you are able to give yourself even more and even more. And it's, it's important to understand that because sometimes we just feel like, yes, Lord, I've given myself to you, but it's a it's a progressive experience. Um, you, you it's like doing that every day, or doing that every week, or doing that every month. Lord, you know, today I give myself to you. Tomorrow, I'm going to give myself to you even more deeply, because more of me is getting out of the way that that can happen. And this is all part of the bonds and the cords. I mean. We don't know what has been set as a snare. Psalms 140, the proud have hidden a snare for us, for me. They have spread the cords of a net by the path. They have set traps. It's so deep because uh, even though the path of the righteous are ordered of the Lord, and even though the path grows brighter day by day, it very much happens in concert with the revealing of the deep and hidden things, of the snares that the enemy has laid, of the traps that he has set. And you, you, you won't know what they are until the Lord shows you. And that progressively happens as you continue to come up higher, as your eyes open up more and more, how does it go in Isaiah? You know, wake up, shake off the dust, arise, come up higher, and then the unclean thing will not come into you. But it happens 
in correlation to your ability to see, to your ability for the Lord to show you. And so we're in a time of deliverance, the deliverance of the sons of God. What is in store right now is something so amazing because it is the deliverance of all creation being set free from futility. But first, the sons have to be set free from the futility that they've been under. We, we have recited these scriptures and we have understood them to a measure, but not really to the degree that is coming now because it's very personal. It's just not quoting, well, we're, you know, the deliverance of creation, the deliverance of the sons. It, it becomes very personal. And it's the deliverance of the sons by virtue of the revealing of the hidden things and the binding of the cords and the bands and the snares that have been set from this life or any other life. Well, I think we could go into you know some other things, but I think this covers it. Uh, there, there's just so much more for us to understand. I remember seeing in vision years ago a man laying on a table. The angels were there working on him, and they were going to perform a um, a surgery. And as I watched. They made sure and checked with the Lord. Okay, is this okay? Is this what we do? The Lord nodded, yes. And so they proceeded to operate on the man's back. And they cut a little slit in the middle of his back. And out of that little slit, they pulled a small scroll of paper out. Then the back healed. And as he unraveled the scroll, the scroll was all of the belief system that that individual had that was false, that was untrue, that was the lie. And so they had removed that. And so much is yet to come in the deliverance of the sons in this whole rewiring that's happening right now. And it's happening right now. Be expecting it. Be looking for it. Because there's a rewiring going on within the sons of God, which is part of this deliverance. For this is the time for this. And I send our blessings. Amen.